Matt Taverner, Head of Sports Science at Everton Football Club. The players will wear the units every day, whether it be from whether they're training with the team or from a rehab perspective. It might be uh, we'll gather the training information to us on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and then how that accumulates then over two weeks, three weeks, and four week training loads, whether that be from an absolute point of view and a relative point of view from training, so we can get information in terms of what that player is doing over a longer picture. From pre season, the game values, we look at that in terms of how each player performs. So we might have one player, for example, Seamus Coleman who produces a large amount of sprint and high intensity distance, whereas on the other side we've got Leighton Baines, which might be, might be a bit more explosive distance inclined. So it's almost weighing up the balance and looking at that in relative terms, rather than just the absolute value. So you could have 200 metres of high speed running for one player, 200 metres of high speed running for another player, but it means a completely different thing. When we're exposed to like high amounts of explosive distance, like higher acceleration and deceleration values in a split change second, we're obviously exposing them to, to, to high amounts of eccentric soreness. So if we're exposing them to too much eccentric soreness going into say a match day minus two going into game day, are we exposing them to an elevated risk of injury? So it's obviously exposing them to the right amount of metrics on the appropriate day. Whereas, so it's obviously then adjusting the volume levers of that metric so you're almost not saying you can't do any explosive distance or any high speed running two games before a game, but it's getting the volume of that certain metric right on the appropriate day leading into match day. So we look at sort of the relationship between sort of stress load and decelerations, sort of as an eccentric tolerance strength measure. So if someone's like produced a high amount of decelerations but their level of DS DSL remains constant to that, then they're sort of tolerating that level of deceleration well. But if their stress load jumps up higher than sort of the decelerations, is that telling us there's, a, there's something going on? Is there a risk of injury which possibly that could account for? One of the big things in terms of how we've been in to utilise the Viper this, this year in the past couple of years is obviously using it as a return to play strategy and tool. We have a couple of ways of looking at this in terms of what players performed before they got injured, what were sort of their distances, what were their exposed jack cells and D-cells, what was their heart rate response to sessions and can we try and expose players to this gradually as they come back towards training, say if it's a six week injury is a gradual exposure to that if they're getting towards that final two week stage or obviously exposing them to high volu higher volumes of what they're normally exposed to also trying to get them gradually towards a higher percentage of their maximal speed that they'll be reaching during from pre-season data that we already have and then it's also looking at not just absolute terms but in relative terms into that how that player what it responds in a game some of the research that recently been published from the Prozone data has tell us that the game is getting more intense in nature. So that would tell us that total distances are coming down and the more high intensity actions such as the sprint distance and the high speed running are going up in games. So obviously we need to look at both the, the different aspects of the game in terms of what's appropriate on different game base. If you look at it from a game perspective, if we're exposing players to lots of small sided games, we're exposing them to lots of explosive distance and sheer number of efforts within different acceleration distance, deceleration velocity bands whereas if you open up the pitch and go to bigger numbers where it's, the, it's more game based situations then we're going to players are going to be exposed to more high speed running for a, a, a wide player or more explosive distance for a centre half and also the sheer magnitude of that acceleration and deceleration is because if there's more open area to develop speed and power then the, that athlete's going to have to break quickly so obviously it's exposing them to the right amount of workload of the right sort of training on the appropriate gauge going into games. So if it's a match day minus four, then the, it wouldn't be more of an intense session where it was a minus two, it's a gradual build up into a low intensity minus one, giving that optimal performance to produce power in the games and obviously with a reduced risk of injury.